Let me bang you. I do let you bang. Hey, let me bang you, Jamie, man. I let you bang. I let you bang. I let you bang. Greetings, Mary's and Virgins. Go for Jesus. No for gay Jesus, people. Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time once again for your favorite mixed martial arts podcast. Recording out of Los Angeles, California, it's MMA Roasted with Adam Hunter. Who the fuck is that guy? What's up, people? Welcome to a brand new MMA Roasted podcast. Me, Adam Hunter. Just got done working out with my... My fight camp, actually, it was. Oh, is that what it was? Okay, yeah. You look at you're all flush in the face, and sorry, let me fix. You got to get it, bro. It's uh, it's great because you don't have. I to don't have any room for it. Is the problem? It's just a bag. You don't have room for one bag. I guess I probably do. Yeah, I probably put it in the office. And well, the best part is you don't have to go to the gym. Like I, you know, yeah. it's like it's not just the gym. It's the parking. It's sad. It's 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 everything else. It's like so I could just go. It's thirty five minutes for eight rounds. You get your cardio up to whatever. I'm, look at me. I'm sweating like a fuck. Yeah, guy. yeah. And then I'm done. You know, uh, like, granted, you, you're right. I'm not actually sparring anybody. You made me feel like a huge pussy when you told me that uh, you just fight the bag, uh, which is which is true. <laughs> I don't even remember saying true. that, but that sounds right. Uh, don't think I haven't thought of that. Every time I, I feel tough, I'm like, yeah, but Greg's like, I actually got hurt going against somebody else, and you just went against the bag. I'm like, that motherfucker stays in my head. Um, but That's uh, so funny. But it, but it, it, it helps, man. I mean, it just, uh, my whole day is better. Like, I hate the, the whole cliche, but it's like, if I work out, at least I got something done. You know, it's something yeah. you feel like you can't get anything done. Um. But if I work out, at least I got something. Yeah, it's selfish and this and that. But also, no, like- it's a, listen, it's very important. It's good for your body, good for your mental game, everything. It, you know, everything about it, your body gets better when you do that. But so, also on stage, on stage, if I, if I know like I'm going after somebody really good and, I, and it's going to be, I'm like, shit, you know, I, I just, stay, I, I could stay in the pocket. Like, I don't, if I sometimes like, a joke doesn't work, I start like, oh, maybe put the microphone back in the thing or I start getting, but if I'm tired, like some of my best shows are when I'm fucking exhausted. When I, when I took three flights to get there and I, I'm not thinking and I'm just reacting in the moment. Yeah. And that's how uh, working out does it for me. It actually gets me tired and I could focus. Um, but then sometimes I'm, I'm like not up to, you know, do anything else. I'm just, ex- especially when you have a kid. Um, I don't know where Sean and, and, and Don are. Uh, last week. Uh, Sean we- McCorkle says he'll be on in a few minutes. So that's good. Okay. Good. I hope I hope Don's coming. Don is so fucking funny. Um, how was your weekend, Greg? It was fun. I was up in uh, where was I? I was with Kabir in Northern California, and um, I did Tommy T's Comedy Club for the first time, which was a disaster uh, because I go there. Okay, and and they okay, so they scheduled a four twenty show. So I was like, great, let's do the four twenty show. You know. I uh, used to be a huge pothead. I still enjoy it on occasion, but not like I, I mean, it used to be just non So the, so we go up there, but the, the Warriors game, you know, was on. And apparently that is the most, apparently that's like a Cowboys game in Dallas is a Warriors game in Northern California. And so, especially that area and they're playing Sacramento, you know, another, you know, right. Crosstown rivals basically. Right. And so the, you know, so the whole world stopped this. So they scheduled a game watching party at the same time. Uh, like the game watching party started at seven. The show, the game was started at seven. And then there was supposed to be a show at eight in the same room. And the game was on on the giant screen oh, God. behind the stage. So no one's watching. So I was like, uh, so they're like, here's what we'll do. We'll wait till halftime. We'll start it. We'll do some of the show at halftime. And I'm like, the halftime's like 15 minutes. Like, what are you, what are you, uh, so they bring up, uh, so, so Kabir goes up to host. He starts the show. He does like 10 minutes. Then he brings up this this woman. She goes on stage, but the game, she has like three minutes before the game starts to get on the screen behind her. Nobody's paying attention to her. She's just basically swinging at ghosts up uh, there. Just like, you know, and I feel terrible for her because I can tell she's very funny. 
This woman, uh, Susan Maletta, you should look her up. Susan Maletta, M U L E T T A. Very funny, but I mean, nobody's paying attention to watching the game. And then she finishes, and Kabir is about to bring me up to like keep going. And I'm like, and I'm like, don't you dare bring me on stage. Don't you do it. I'm not going up there right now. Nobody, and even he at a certain point had turned around and was just like doing commentary about the game. Uh, and then he was going to bring me out. I'm like, don't bother, dude. We have lost this. Let's do it. We'll, after the game's over, we'll try and do the thing. So then as the game, they so we got up there at a certain point in the fourth because the, the, the Warriors were blowing him out. And he was like, listen, if they get up by 20, we're starting the show. Ah. And of course, they danced at 18, 17, 19 for like, uh. you know, all the fourth quarter. Finally, they go up by 20. He gets up there. He's like, all right, they're up by 20. Let's start the show. And he turns off. They turn off the screens in the room. Now everyone's like, Burr. <laughs> they're all bit, like, they don't know how it's going to end. They're all looking at their phones and shit. But you and just waited until the game was over and then just condensed the show. And, at that point, I mean, yeah, there's only like three minutes left in the game. It really didn't help at all to start it a few minutes. Early. So then he puts up this poor guy, Raul Reyes, who sits up there and just eats oh. a bullet. And then he brings me up and like nobody, I was like, I, I was swinging at ghosts too. Like nobody was paying attention. Uh, Everyone was just kind of like, you know, the people that had been there for the show had waited so long because of the game. Like some of them left and the people that were there for the game didn't give a fuck about the show. They were just still fucking sitting there. So it was, uh, it was, it was, that was just a straight up disaster. Now, Friday night, we go to the Orinda Theater in Orinda. Beautiful, amazing, sold out show. I crushed the fuck out of it. Great show. Saturday night, we go do a bar show at Kirby's, which, you know, good old fashioned bar show. Uh, I got too drunk. So did they. Who fucking cares? We had a ball time, you know, it's like, whatever, it is what it is. It's a bar show. We still had a great time. And so, when, you know, so that was still a lot of fun. But getting up at 5 a.m. the next day to catch my flight was, uh, the fact that I made it to the plane is fucking unbelievable. I'm a warrior in some respects that way. So, but it was overall, it was a fun weekend. But that's, the, now it was one of those weekends where I wish that I had rented a car because there was nothing around my hotel. So, but overall, a lot of, it was a lot of fun. How was your weekend? It was good. Well, well, we I went to a wedding with my wife. It was her. It was her friend from high school, and there was another girl there that she didn't want to see, who was like mean to her in high school, and then laughed her. So I had to like, I had to kind of you know buffer that situation. Um, and then, uh, but but th that was fine. But and it was a wedding outside on a golf course, and in the middle of like they're up there about to say I do, the one of the the mom starts singing right. The mom, uh, but like doesn't tell anyone. Just breaks out in a song, so, so I look at my wife. I'm like, "Is this a, a, a musical? Like, like, like no one, <laughs> nobody prepared. Is this Mama Mia? <laughs> like, that, like she didn't tell anyone. Oh, like, hey, we're gonna. My mom's gonna sing a song. So I mean, she was a good singer, but it, no. What one was the song? I don't know. It was like two birds leave their nest. It was like some Christian oh. song. And, so i can't help but start making jokes to my wife like like is she even part of the wedding like who is this lady like is this give her the light you know like one of the yeah was she just trying to play through and she was like if i sing maybe they'll move like what the fuck so, so then so then right so then my wife keeps nudging me like so then my wife's like oh the, the teacher was the one that married her right her high school mm -hmm. teacher was the one that married the uh, ma married the uh, the bride and groom, right? And she's like, "Oh, this is my favorite teacher in high school. He was my history teacher." Blah blah blah. Let's go say hi to him. So we go and uh, we say hi, and the guy's like, "Hey, a uh, funny story about about Brianna, your wife." I'm like, "What's that?" He's like, "Back oh. in um, right." So I know it's not going to be a funny story. Totally right? not a great start. No, I don't want to hear this, dude. Don't make me knock you out. So he goes back in tenth grade. I was teaching, and I was the only guy male teacher in the classroom here we and, go and i walk in and my fly was down and your wife says teacher your fly's down and like that was the whole story right um but now i gotta oh thank god that was it oh shit i, <laughs> I expect i want to know story. what happened 10 minutes before that story <laughs> totally, like a, exactly. like before I, was, in. I was expecting something much different so of course i received a lot of unwanted female attention especially from your wife <laughs> 
I swear she wanted it so bad in high school. It was one of the hardest things. I must have beat off your wife like 30 times. Like I was literally expecting this to be a much worse story. No, it was a it was like an innocent story, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to think of this guy's penis at this wedding. You know, this guy's like 70 years old and his fly being down. So that was so then we go out and then there's like a boxing match on, right? The big boxing match. And it's on during the wedding. So I'm I'm watching it on my phone, right? I'm watching it like out in the hallway, right? And then of course. The the brother during the speech goes, I met some cool guys like uh, like Brianna's husband who was watching the fight, but I wasn't even there. So now everyone's looking for me. I didn't know I was going to get a fucking cameo uh, shout out. Oh, my God. You got <laughs> called out in the middle. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was a bunch of Navy guys there. So then they're, they're all watching the fights, too. So then all of a sudden I took the whole wedding out of the party to watch the fight. So now the so now they're like the the. the, the the bride is mad at me because like everybody because <laughs> everyone's outside watching the fucking fight on your phone oh yeah no, no no nobody's watching the wedding and then i'm so tired that my wife's at the end is like hey let's go to the after party and i'm like fucking oh my god uh, having it at an airbnb so i just stayed in the car and slept while she went to the after party that's that's the age i'm at i'm like i, I didn't even go to the party i'm like i'll wait for you to go to the party come back in the car uh, and then boy, when the Adderall wears off, you're fucking done, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like, let's go. To the- <laughs> so, so then we get home, and of course, my cat ran away. We have this new cat that's a year old that was an outdoor oh, cat, fuck. right? So, of course, so now, of course, the cat, but we figured it would be it goes away, it comes back, it has this boyfriend, this black cat that comes by looking for food, it's like the whole neighborhood, right? So, we, we get home at like one in the morning, that's where all the trouble starts. <laughs> that's right i didn't know who was coming from the cork or fry one of them was gonna hit my mind somewhere. was scurrying around i had like Dude, 30 that different soft, options that softball was just hanging out there I was just right on front of one, <laughs> so now my cat so now the, i spent three hours looking for the cat going through here and i and my neighborhood isn't the best neighborhood like there's like i think there's a crack house next door across the street i told you this car drove into my house you know and they didn't fat catch the guys so i don't want to start going to people's yards at like one in the morning like that might not be good but i'm looking for this cat so we looking leave, for your pussy yeah so yeah so we're leaving cat food everywhere we wake up in the morning there's a possum eating the cat food that sounds right and uh, then luckily we found the cat. It was at this abandoned house with like seven cats. My wife was asking the other cats where the cat was and they actually led her to the cat. Uh, so- Bunch of snitches. <laughs> Bitches God, be man. snitches. <laughs> and then I, I, need, I need to get my car wash, right? But the best car wash is like down the block. But I got into a, a fight last time I was there with the guy who washed the car because this guy washed my car and threw out my kids' toys. And not like little fucking dollar toys, oh, like a fifty dollar Anna and Elsa doll, right? Like, like so. So of course we come back and Violet's, where's my doll? Starts crying. So I, I'm like, where's the doll? The guy's like, he this, threw uh, it away. He, did, he, yeah. he lost it. It was in the garbage. Now I'm looking through fucking garbage uh, at the car wash, and I whip out this Anna doll, and I'm like, why would you throw this away? So now I'm about to fight a guy over a fucking because the guy's all like. It was like, you know, tough Armenian guy. He's like, Let's, you should have had it wrapped up in a bag. And, and this is your fault. And I'm like, this is a fucking. So now. You mean to tell me there was an Armenian guy being unreasonable? I find that hard to believe. I've never seen an Armenian be unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so like. Dude, we, I, can, I, we can all be unreasonable. <laughs> dude, I like I like told my friend about it who has like five kids d mcdermott's kid he's got five kids with, I mean, with, with tory spelling and he's like where's this car wash and i think he's gonna go and like talk to the guy like get, get mad he's like i got so much shit in my car i need to get rid of it he's like they throw, he's like, they throw shit away this is great he, fucking went, he went right over there so like, uh so, by the way I, I spoke to mayhem he's getting out of jail on sunday um and uh so mayhem will be all out. right so he'll be out of jail this sunday what's the over under on when he goes back the boy there it is there it is <laughs> he's going uh, to, he's going yeah, to, are, we, are, we, are we talking who's got days who's got weeks and who's got right. months? i, <laughs> right. I stopped I'll gambling take, but i'll put some money on that one exactly. i'll take weeks i want weeks i i think he's got a good three weeks in him <laughs> who's so taking talking- days who's taking months He's going to the comedy club Sunday night. 
he's getting out of jail and going right to a comedy club. Uh, his girlfriend is a comedian and she's picking him up and taking her to the show. Um, which I'm not uh, sure. is not still, okay. Um, <laughs> How does that work out? Like when you ask her on a date when you're in jail, now, like you're like, you know, assuming I do get released, what time will you be here? Like, you know, but that's the thing for her. It's great because for one, she knows where he is. Right. <laughs> not a lot of competition. No, not not much. She's got him to nail down there. <laughs> so, um, Sean, what's going on with you? Same old stuff, man. Just living the dream. Not my dream, but somebody probably had this dream at some point. <laughs> so it isn't my dream, but uh, no, same old, same old, man. And Don? Uh, well, <laughs> not much. Just living the dream. Not my dream, but somebody else's dream. You know? <laughs> oh, you've heard this one. <laughs> Right. You know how many people would die to be Don Fry? Like, that's what I think about all the time. Like, people tell me all the time. I went to a casino the other night, um, uh, me and my girl, and they, the whole time, drunk guys were coming up to me like, if I was your size, I was like, you'd be in jail because you would <laughs> live out every fantasy you have of picking on people or being a bully, and you would go to jail or get stabbed, you know? But uh, they always say, what, you had to play football. And I'm like, no, I fought in the UFC. But then they think you mean, like, the local UFC. They never believe it's the real one. Like, oh, my buddy fought fought that too. I was like, yeah, I'm sure he was good, you know, or whatever. And they uh it's the same conversation over and over again, but they always go back to football. You should have played football. I'm like, yeah, I, I know. So uh so uh hey, listen, both <laughs> of them are gonna leave you with a fucked up back. So right. That's all yeah, either way. I always thought I should have played football until I talked to Mitch Rion and he goes, Well, let me tell you how much total I made in five years for 40 concussions, a broken foot, and he started naming off all his injuries, a dislocated shoulder. You yeah. know, and, and, uh, he said it wasn't worth it. He made more in his first two fights with Bellator than he did the entire time he was in the NFL. So I, I met uh, Brian Bosworth one time, and he told me how he had had 40 surgeries total on his two sho shoulders. Golly, man. 40. Yeah. His uh, 30 for 30 was great, though. Did you watch it? No, I haven't. But I mean, wow. yeah, no, he was. Listen, his story was amazing. He was a fucking rock star in college, you know. But yeah, he was. They kept putting him out there injured. Uh, he this is before they gave him out there to the first practice. He took a helicopter to practice just to piss off the rest of the team. <laughs> I bet. And then I bet it a, worked. I bet it worked. Then he had a T-shirt that said "Like Stop the Boz," right? That he sold when he was playing against someone else, and he made all the money. They thought they were like. Uh, like the other team was buying it, and it, it went to him. Like that's that's genius. yeah. Thing is, thing is against Seattle, you know. Yeah. So um, I don't know if you guys watched. He was smart. It was smart marketing. I don't know if you guys watched some of the uh, what went on over the weekend um, with the with the uh, Diaz brothers. Yeah, one of them like choked a dude out on the streets of New Orleans. I saw. It. I mean, he put him out fast. Well, it all started with this, right? So I guess there's this. Lots of different um, oh, what's it called again? When you're uh, YouTube, Twitter, what are you? influencers. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you're an influencer, right? Now there's influencer boxing, right? And so for some reason, the Diaz brothers were at <laughs> in New Orleans at the influencer boxing match. So there's this guy who's this big YouTube star, uh, Chase Chase Demore, I think his name is. I never I never heard of the guy, but so he had his fight. And this is what happened in his fight. So his that fight dude sucks, man. That dude sucks. Why? Why? Why does he suck? As a person, have you seen his interviews? He thinks he's like he really thinks he's tough. Like he, that guy is delusional. Like he thinks he's like a real good fighter. He thinks he's a badass. He sucks. Man. What? What is he famous for? Uh, I think being on some show where he like was a rapper, but he was dating a girl. One of those reality shows, I think. Like whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like pick out your rapper or something. I don't know. So this was well. You, let's we can all thank the Paul brothers for this. <laughs> yeah. Can you guys see this? Can you guys see the screen? Yeah, unfortunately. So this is his fight. Yeah, and he was winning his fight. He had Wait. watching finish. Which one is he? <laughs> the one throwing Which the illegal punches on top. <laughs> so he knocks the guy out, but yeah. he doesn't stop punching. Watch, see. So he, I, I never yeah. saw ground and town boxing. The guy's on the ground. And he's still punching. Yeah. So he and celebrates afterward. That's the referee. Well, so then he gets disqualified, right? So then Nate Diaz is like sitting in front of him, right? So, so that's <laughs> so Nate Diaz, who I don't know if he never got a chance to go to water parks as a kid, but he's like, I, like at first he hit through one water bottle, then two water bottles. 
now he must be up to like a oh, <laughs> whatever. They, whenever he has a water bottle, he throws it. Oh, yeah, never, there's trouble brewing when he's drinking bottled water. Like there's, I, there's a fight I've about never, to happen. I've never seen a guy so good at throwing water bottles. So here he is. Hold on. So can you can you can you can you, you guys see this right? Yeah. So, so okay. I guess does he not drink anymore? Is that what Come it up. is? So he just no. Yeah. So he's sitting in front of this guy, Chase, and then he gets <coughs> up and he throws the water bottle. Okay, his name he's is- throwing it at the guy that just did the ground and pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets up. <laughs> so, of course, like, so now. <laughs> Um, fucking melee, and it was a that was a good one. Like he basically, they were, yeah, they were saying that Diaz ran, but he ran because the guy picked up a chair to throw it at him. So he was trying to get a little distance between him and the chair. If you look on the video, the guy's got a chair over his head. So they went so, full WWE. So cut to Nate leaves. There's a, now there's a huge melee outside. Right, all these fights are breaking out outside. So Nate, so there's a guy who goes by not Logan Paul. Right, so basically. <laughs> His whole claim to fame is he looks like Logan Paul, but he's not Logan Paul, right? So he's 1-0 in influencer boxing. So Nate Diaz sees this guy on the street, and the guy looks like he doesn't want to fight, right? So the guy's like, okay. So the Nate calmly puts him in like a, 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 a guillotine, modify a guillotine right here, and then uh, just basically okay. chokes him out and just drops him. So now everybody was saying that Nate thought it was Logan Paul. I don't know if that's true, but that would be amazing if he actually believed. Well, it and the, the, the best part is that, you know, I mean, a guy sleeping on the street in New Orleans, I mean, right. <laughs> it's pretty I easy to know. get away with. It's pretty easy to get away with that one, you know. Another guy just passed there, out doesn't draw attention at all. Not so at all. Everyone just keeps on partying. So. so now here we are. And then not Logan Paul makes a video now. Okay, about wanting to fight Nate Diaz. He looks like Logan Paul on meth. Yeah. He looks like Logan Paul in Dallas Buyers Club. <laughs> so he says he's going to knock out Nate Diaz, right? Uh, right. Yeah. And then it worked out really well for him the first time. <laughs> yeah. And then the real. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to make a bit. And now the real Jake Paul and Logan made a video of how to defend yourself against Nate Diaz if you're not Logan Paul. So here we are. I hope there's an umbrella involved. Here we go. Uh, this is their video they made about how to defend themselves. That's funny. It's going to be in my video, Dad. <laughs> All right, guys. Welcome back to jakeselfdefense.com. Today we're going to be teaching you what to do if you see a homeless Stockton man trying to come at you in the middle of the streets. Now, if you look anything like a Paul brother, keep your eyes peeled because the streets are hot. Now, oh my I'll God. be demonstrating the MMA fighter, and this will be the poor victim on, on the side of the street. Whoa, well, I really don't want any problems. Please leave me alone. I don't want any problems. Don't give a cut, man. Well, oh, so I got him in this uh, chokehold now, and what you're going to want to do is take out your safety snorkel and insert the snorkel for extra airflow. All right. So, so that explains the shorts. Eight, At least three. we know it's a joke now. Yeah. I was like, I was like, what escape. is going on here? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hold on. Where can I get this? All right. So, you are you guys still here? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, all right. So, what, Don? What are your thoughts on uh, all this? Uh man, I'll tell you what, you you're giving them free advertisement. Yeah, you know, you you're just a sucker. You're, you're <laughs> one of the biggest suckers on, on the on the computers. What's up, people? Support for MMA Roasted is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels, which are very important, especially to our people watching. Well, to everybody, really. But Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 8 million people worldwide, okay, who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, which is 20% off 
and free worldwide shipping with the code MMA Roasted at manscaped.com. My math is correct. That's about 16 million balls. That's a lot of balls, people. Lots and lots of balls. Okay. Listen, I've been using the Performance Package 4.0. It's a game changer. Okay. I remember before I used to use scissors or I would use a razor. I've cut my balls and that is not fun. Okay. I've scraped them. I, people thought I had STDs. They, I just had all kinds of just, just terrible things. All right. Just horrible stuff on my nuts. Okay. And uh, thanks to Manscaped, it's all taken care of. Okay. First of all, first off, the lawnmower 4.0, the trimmer is the future of grooming. And dare I say the greatest ball trimmer ever. I tried lots of ball trimmers. Okay. I, I plucked them out. I, I, <laughs> Hasn't been good, okay? But um, this trimmer is waterproof and you can say goodbye to the mess in the bathroom floor, okay? My wife comes in, she's hair everywhere. She's like, what's going on? It looked like a somebody ran over a a Furby or something, okay? Listen, Manscaped is, is the way to go, okay? Time to take care of yourself. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code MMA Roasted. Okay, that's 20% off. Free shipping. Use the code MMA Roasted at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code MMA Roasted. Unlock your confidence. Okay. Let your balls out. Okay. You, uh, you take home a girl for the first night or your wife or a guy, whatever you're into, they could be like, wow, this person takes care of you. You don't want stinky nuts. All right. You don't want women to pass out and just have all kind of funk down there. Not good. Okay. I used to look like Ben Askren down there. Girls would be like, is that Askren? Because it would just be just lots of hair everywhere. <sighs> yeah. It was like, it was like Chase Hooper down on my nutsack. Not good. Okay. Unlock your confidence. Always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Check it out. Uh, Greg. Uh, listen, man. I, you know what? That's my favorite video they've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only thing that they've ever done that i liked so you know uh, that's all that's all i can tell you about that although don's not wrong I, and i have complained about this many times that we get we talk about them for some reason and just add into all it's pure bananas i mean you know i i love the way that he is like he lost to a real boxer so of course now he went back to fighting guys who aren't real boxers yeah. well well no because what happened when now there's a warrant out for nate diaz's arrest in New Orleans. Uh, that's the latest as of today. And now the fight might be off. So according to uh, now KSI has said he'll fight Nate Diaz instead. And uh, Nate Diaz responded to LOL. Why don't you scared pussies just fight each other in August? I'll fight someone who can really fight. Uh, which like not Logan Paul. <laughs> <laughs> he'll fight that guy. <laughs> Um, which is not good because this is his biggest payday, dude. I mean, you're going to get three, four, or five. I mean, you're going to get a lot of money for this. Um, at least a million dollars, Nate Diaz. Especially if you take the dive. Yeah. So well, What's crazy is they're going to have to pay off a guy that doesn't look like Logan Paul in order to drop the charges to make the fight happen. So now that guy that his claim to fame is looking like a meth head, Logan Paul, is going to get paid on the Diaz fight. That's what's crazy. But him making this dumb video saying, I'll knock you out, I mean, can't Nate, can't Nate say, can't just say, well, he was threatening me and I was scared. And I I mean, hmm. yeah, I don't think they can stop. Just because there's a warrant out. I don't think they can stop him from fighting somewhere. That doesn't seem right. You know, you know just like fighting. there's a not Logan Paul, there's another Diaz brother available. So <laughs> <laughs> last time I checked, they're pretty similar. You can just plug him right in, I think. Somebody had a really funny video that I reposted that I thought was hilarious. They said, uh, this is Nate, this guy, uh, he said, Nate Diaz, when he goes outside, hold on, this is actually one of the funniest things. He goes, Nate Diaz, when he's out in public, and he just had the, the Batman. <laughs> he's just fighting oh, right. Just fighting everybody in the dark. Yeah. I mean, man, it sucks because... Uh, I love the way in every movie, every bad guy just hangs out in a nightclub. <laughs> waiting, waiting to get punched.
Totally. They're all just why are every nightclub the bad guys are just in the dark with like ding 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 ding. They're just all angry over in the corner, whether it's John Wick, whether it's Batman, whether it's, all these movies, same fucking thing. Blade, they're all the bad guys hanging out at nightclubs. We well, we never found out why John Wick is so good at fighting. Like at least with the other guys, you get a backstory. It's just that he's just amazing at kicking at killing everybody. That's okay, like, well, here's the thing. That would have required four more pages of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't do that in John Wick movies. There's no exposition. There's no story. There's just a, a launch point and then fighting. Oh, so, God. And not even fighting, just shooting and shit and fucking falling you know, down. When I, first, uh, when I first heard that Keanu Reeves is going to be an action star after Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure... I thought, man, that'll that'll be amazing to see like him actually what he's actually like as opposed to the character he plays in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Until I found out that's just him, because even in the <laughs> yeah. movie where he's a, it's an action hero who's like whoa, like on everything, you know, it's the same it's the same dude. It's like Mark Wahlberg is just Mark Wahlberg in every movie. Like it's not yeah. it's like a new character, but it's just him every time. You know, so. Nobody has made a career resurgence like Keanu Reeves. I mean, he was like a joke in the '90s and '80s. I remember there was a a sketch of Keanu Reeves acting class on mad TV. I think it was Pablo Francisco <laughs> did. And basically it was like, clear all your thoughts and just say the dialogue. It was hilarious. And meanwhile, now it's like, he's like a bona fide. I mean, everyone just loves him. It was, which is, a well, the matrix is what really changed his life. I mean, that movie was when, I mean, at the time, remember DVDs came out and they said of all DVD sales, uh, they had, there was a one to one like every single DVD had DVD player had a DVD of the Matrix. Wow! Like that wow. was the number one best selling DVD of the nineties by far, and so everyone owned it. So I mean, it changed his career. So did you guys watch the Tank versus Garcia fight? I watched. I, the no, I watched the highlights. Yeah, I watched the highlights. All right, so Don, uh, Sean, it was this great boxing match of uh, two undefeated guys, and I can't believe they actually made the fight, right? And of yeah. course, when I first heard it, I'm like, "Oh, Tank's gonna win." This guy Garcia is great, but he keeps his chin up. His punches are too wide. He he leaves himself vulnerable to punches. But then I watched those fucking countdown specials, which is the worst because it always yeah. gives you the impression. <laughs> that the guy that you know is going to lose <laughs> has a shot of winning every single every time, time. every time. I, and I bet after whichever special I just watched, oh, God. whatever preview I just watched, I'm like, oh, no, I'm putting 20 bucks on him. Then I'm like, oh, no, 30 bucks the other way. <laughs> yeah, I literally bet on both dudes because I was just such an idiot. But I knew that Garcia might have, I, I knew he was in trouble when he started talking about how he had depression and he had severe depression and he couldn't leave his house. And I'm like, okay, that's not what you want to hear of a guy going into a huge fight. I mean, granted, it was a while back, but so the fight kind of went as I thought it was going to be. It was, uh, you know, Garcia came out, he, tr he tried to bully him and then he left himself open and he got caught. And it's not good when you're watching a boxing match. When you start saying, I'm like, dude, he's got to keep his left hand up. He's he's dropping his jab when he's punching. I'm like, I shouldn't be saying this. And then I'm like, well, well what do I know about boxing? I'm, I'm just the guy. And then all of a sudden, the announcer, who's a boxer, is like, oh, yeah, he he's throwing a lazy jab. He's going to get caught. And I'm like, why are we saying? <laughs> why, is, right. why? And, of course, he ended up getting caught with a body punch. And he got caught with a liver punch, which it was a delayed punch. And in which everybody's like, you're a pussy, you got no heart. And then all of a sudden, all these other people are experts on liver punches, which was, but uh, I don't know what's going to happen with them. And now they're saying, you know, De La Hoya, who was repping the guy, didn't show up to the, the post-fight conference. He said he was there was a death threat against him. He was scared for his life. Yeah, which, that or he was coked out of his mind wearing oh, yeah. a dress. Oh, one, of those oh. two, one of those two things happened. He didn't feel yeah, comfortable showing okay, up in drag. Yeah. <laughs> All transvestites have a death threat against him, you know. Oh, shit. That's what they use out. Wait, hold on. Uh Don, he he's a transvestite? When is, is that you on your mug? <laughs> yep. It's me on yep. my mug. <laughs> Super, <laughs> yep, that is me on my mug. Here you uh, go, fuck it. So, uh, and then they had a video of Conor McGregor going back and giving advice to Garcia. Did you watch that? Right. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that was weird. weird. I can't leave that the house after seeing that video. Uh, Greg, what are your thoughts on that? 
I didn't know why he was back. I mean, I'm like, you're not, you're not a real boxer. Like, why are you giving him pointers now? And the fight's over. Now you're giving him tips. Like, all right, it made no sense to me whatsoever. I was like, why is he back there? Why is this happening? Should we so watch it? I, or no? You want to watch I, it or no? We can watch it. Let me tell you something though. I will say this: from what I saw of the fight, it it seemed apparent to me that Garcia was the better boxer. But that Gervonta was definitely, he had power and was just kind of just, kind of just biding his time and then bop, bop, and we come in and just, just, he, he was a more efficient fighter uh, with greater power. power. The, other guy, the other guy was, was very wide, you know, he was very wide with his you okay? Um you Well, okay? again, I just, this is just from watching the highlights. I didn't watch yeah. the, the, the fight. So from what I could see on the highlights, but then I saw the judge scorecards. I was like, most of them had Javante <laughs> Davis winning funny. most of the rounds. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. So, <laughs> you know. Here's Connor. He's one and only. These are the two biggest names in the division. I want to see it again. Yeah. I want to yeah. see it again now. And I want to see it with no reason to face it but you're a crafty Jew, you're trying to take him with the lead hook. Hey, all the respect in the world to you. The future, the future is damn. I'm, I'm going much more. At least we know what happened to uh, to Oscar's cocaine, the rest of it. Wow, really, man. I'm surprised Jake Paul didn't show up with a few tips. <laughs> So, and then there's a video of Connor going up to Mayweather Sr. Also, coked, I mean, I don't know, allegedly coked out of his mind, but it, it does seem like McGregor's got to calm down. I mean. Yeah, that was the one I saw was him talking to Mayweather Sr. And Mayweather Sr. is just like, okay, like this guy's high. I've seen this before. Okay. When, when Mayweather Sr. <laughs> yeah. When Mayweather Sr. seems normal, that's right. when you know. Things yeah. Are he was like, I've seen a guy high on coke before. I'm just going to let him run out of gas and then just move on. Hold, hold on one sec. My charge is come talk amongst yourself. Talk amongst ourselves. He just leaves us in the middle of the. Hey, listen, though, it was a pretty good fight. I mean, what did it make? Seven, eight rounds? I mean, that's, you, listen, that's a pretty good fight. Yeah. That's like getting in 20 minutes on a Brendan Sharp story. <laughs> no, not <it's>, really. <laughs> <laughs> Those two are not the same. So, yeah, yeah, listen, did you guys? Did, now, I did watch the UFC fights, most yes. of that main card, and and I'll tell you what, a lot of lot of first round knockouts. Two of them I thought were pretty early stoppages, though. But I mean, it was like there were like four first round knockouts in in the in the in the card, like. In the well, main card, the last fight of the, the prelims, and then on the main card, there were like three first round knockouts, right, right in a row. Pop, 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 pop. That's how the night ended. It was it was pretty well, wild Curtis, to watch. Curtis Blades, I love Curtis Blades, but I just, I mean, can you teach fight IQ? Because it seemed like the other guy was a far better striker. Curtis Blades is a better wrestler, and Blades decides to not shoot until three minutes into the round when he's already being tagged up, and then he yeah. gets and he gets knocked out, and uh. I think that was the only – yeah, he might have had a shot if he would have stuck to his wrestling or even started with his wrestling. I mean, it's okay to win ugly. Now, Pavlovich, by the way, has tied Don Fry for the second longest knockout streak in UFC history, by the way. Uh, so congrats, Don. You, you have you, – you now have a little company, but you're, you're in good company. Um, How many was that? Uh, Don, six. Chuck Liddell has six or the, seven. Uh, Chuck Liddell has seven. He has the most. Okay. And then, you know, and, uh, Don, you have, and Don has six. But I mean, six, you six. watch Pavlovich, uh -huh. you watch Pavlovich. It, it's interesting because now they're talking about, okay, is there a title fight? And I guess, so now you'd have to fight John Jones. And it's like uh, the skill set, I mean, all we've seen out of Pavlovich is a boxer. I mean, he just has incredible power. He's a great, but, but I mean, we have no idea if he can even kick. Oh, no, he, no, no, he's got good kicks. Game. No, no, he's got good kicks and he's got decent takedown defense. I mean, Blaze tried to take him down. He couldn't take him down. No, that was one lazy, horrible shot. That was, and he didn't even give it any, he just tried and was like, oh, I'm, it's too late. Like, that was that was not a real but the shot. Guys, and, his, his only loss is to Overeem. And who knows if Overeem was on anything at that time? Uh, I would say, I would guess to say yes. He's How like, long ago was it? It was six fights ago, or no? Se I mean, it was seven fights ago because he's won. He's he won six knockouts in a row, and the guy he's the guys he's knocked out are are really good. Tied to Vaza, 
Yeah. Uh, he knocked out the Black Beast. Now he knocked out Curtis Blades. I think Jones has a legitimate challenge. It, it, if, if Jones beats uh, Stipe, he's, he's got to fight Pavlovich. Or if they don't make the Stipe fight. I mean, that's the thing. If he does fight Pavlovich, it would be... I, I, it's really just a matter of Pavlovich can touch him. If he gets him, because, I mean, this guy's power... I mean, if he can catch him and clock him, he—I mean, his only chance—he has to knock out Jones. But if Jones can get wrapped around him, yeah, I just don't know that Pavlovich has any kind of defense for that kind of for his high level of grappling. Don, you watched the fight? No, did not. I was at my girlfriend's washing her goats. Oh, okay. Um, Ooh, you know, what kind of bass. is that? What they call it these days? Washing her goats. I like it. How so, many? Yeah. Wait, how many? Yeah, how many wash, goats does your girlfriend have? Goats. How many goats does your girlfriend have? She got like fucking fifty, man. Jeez, she got a lot of goats. What? Why did? Where did you meet your girlfriend with fifty goats? I did. It was not. It was a joke, dumbass. I'm not baiting goats. <laughs> fucking. <hate. laughs> Wait, so, John, explain this shit to them. I believed you. Are you kidding? <laughs> city there's, slickers. God, there's nothing that you... Last time I said, hey, you know, what was that? Carrying your gun as a joke, and you whipped out a fucking gun that looked like a gun from one of those, like, spaghetti westerns. Like, it was... <laughs> 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 it literally, yeah. he pulled it out, and you can see here. It looked like one of those fake guns. I wish I could whistle better. That have, like, a flag that say bang. You know how, like, it says, like, they say... <laughs> It looked like yeah. right. from Tuesday. What about that what time you, you said, Don, is that a hole wait, in your leg? And he opened up a massive wound. Wait, no, he has oh, another gun God. on you. Wait, wait, what gun is that you have? Yeah. This this is a new one I just got. Um a Taurus, nine millimeter. Just uh just a pocket gun, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> the old uh the old pocket gun. <laughs> Why do you carry guns during the podcast when you're laying down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Have you not, seen yeah. the podcast? Yeah. That's, that's the only I'll I'll consider that's that's only... loaded here. Every once in a while, after he stayed, he saved myself from shooting myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why. Wait, how many guns do you have in your house? I don't have any guns now. No, 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 no. Tell the government I don't have any guns. You know, they're just <laughs> rubber, plastic, you know, uh, fake guns. Just just Got for... Uh, uh, of course. Yeah, kind of lessons. Just use. give people lessons, you know. Of course, yeah. of course. Of yeah, course. absolutely. All right, back to the fight. So, uh, Self, so Self-firing so guns, yes. So Jared Gordon fought Bobby Green. Now, Bobby Green is a guy uh, who is now retiring himself as Bobby Green and coming right. back coming back as king. He, he's just going to come out as king. That's his... So, I, that's his new thing. Is he's coming back as a different king. player. <laughs> yes, king. So... Did he take king, the title king, from king, Macho king Man Lawler. Savage after he took it from the King Lawler? Remember that when, when Macho Man was the king for a while? So, he's this king. So, he fights Jared no. Gordon, right? And... He has his hands down. Now, this guy's been stopped four of the last six fights for having his hands down. He comes not even attempting to put his hands up. Like, his hands are down, like, just way down. Like, come, and he just comes straight forward, right? And he some, and he's winning. He's still winning this fight. So he comes in with a headbutt, right? By an accidental headbutt. And he knocks the guy down. And then he, he finishes with ground and pound. Right, but the whole time Paul Felder is yelling, "That was a headbutt! That was just that. They got to stop it!" Right. So the ref thinks he, the ref says he won. Bobby Green is dancing, right, and the other guy, uh, Jared Gordon, is complaining. And then they announce that he didn't really win. It's a no yeah. contest. It's a no contest, right? So now, after he danced and headbutt, he thought he elbowed him. He said he didn't think he headbutted him. He thought he the king thought he elbowed him. Right. He elbowed him with his head. <laughs> That's more yeah. or less what he thought. <laughs> so now this was the uh the the uh the the, the post fight press conference uh after which was interesting. By the green was not having a good time at this at this press conference. Here we go. So it's uh, tough to be the king. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. All right. Uh, um, I don't know. I, did you ask me a question, Mama? Really, right now. 
Okay. You need right, to come yeah. talk to us. I'm wondering if you can just talk to me about what you're feeling right now. Did you ask me a question about my feelings before? I did. You know how um, fuck it. We're gonna let some feelings out today. Fuck this, fuck this, and fuck this. You know what I mean? Like, I get it, I get it. We fucking clash heads. What's uh, he trying to say? We go for a, 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 an elbow, and he kind of dipped his head and we kind of clash. But he was still fucking moving. He was trying to put me in a fucking triangle. I fought the triangle shit off, and he was still moving fine. And then after when I busted it that, wow, then he was fucked up. He was still straight. And they want to try to slide me on my money. That's what I'm mad about. I need my money, bro. I need my money. Well, crowns aren't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so that was... <laughs> but I mean, I get what he's saying. I mean, you know, the difference in money between a no contest and a knockout in the first round is substantial, I would imagine. It's probably the difference between like eight thousand bucks and forty thousand bucks. Yeah. You know, yeah. after they said uh they said Errol Hawani went to look to interview the Queen afterward, but uh <laughs> Bruce Buffer had already left the building. Oh boy. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, I understand Bobby Green. I mean, what a crazy emotions you know range. You go from like you know, winning a fight to celebrating to fuck this to not getting paid. I I, I understand it's got to be. What's his win bonus, man? That's that's good. I guarantee you, he's in the what fifty thousand range on the win bonus, right? Probably, yeah. That's got to be. That's disappointing, uh, man. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a lot of money to take, especially when he felt he definitively won the fight, but. You know, unfortunately, there's this little thing called video evidence where, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of cameras uh, pointed at you during these fights, and uh, it was very apparent. It was a headbutt, you know, and there's nothing you can do. I mean, you know, fuck. Uh, now, you know, you know, it would be nice if, if the UFC ever did anything right by these guys and still gave him maybe like like 20 or something, yeah. you know, but you know they're not going to do that. You know that they're going to still hold their feet to the flame while they're going to be like, sorry, no contest. No, but they that, should with a guy, a guy like that who's had 50 fights in there and is always... It cost there. him 100 grand, man. His win bonus was 100 grand, they said. So, uh, oh, that's disappointing when you're counting on that money, man. That, uh... Jeez. So looks like he's looks like he's not going to be the king for a few more right. months. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have to step down from the throne for a little while, man. That's yeah, right. like he had it all picked out. He had the whole throne, everything. So, although <laughs> with the, my favorite part about that, you were saying he was winning the 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 fight all the way up until that. I, I wouldn't. I don't know if he was. I didn't see him really winning it so much <laughs> as I mean he was. Definitely, but the my favorite part was just listening to the commentators try to justify. His hand down approach, like, yeah, I mean, technically, you would never tell anyone to do this, never do it, but it does give you certain. I mean, you can really see the punches coming, like, no shit, Sherlock. No, it's all you can see, by the way, a fucking punch is coming. It was the dumbest listening to try and justify his style was just well, hysterical. I think you know he's getting a little long in the tooth, as they say it, and speeds the first to go. So I, I would assume that like that style might work when you're a little quicker and you're younger and you're early in your career. Yeah. But now you've been stopped the last four to six times. You've been knocked out. You might want to keep your hands up. I, I no, he literally, wait a minute. This is my favorite commentary is when he goes, he goes, yeah, when your hands are down, you can literally just put your head where you want the punches to go. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm like, don't oh, fucking geez. sit, asshole. Where the fuck? Is Wait, who was that John Anik? I want to know who said that. It had to be no, John. It was like the, they had some British guy. It was the British like, guy. It was the British yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and God. I mean, I was dying. Michael Bisbee. Like, no, it wasn't Bisbee. No, no, no. Some the, some other. He's just like an announcer guy, but he's British. He only does a few of the events. Yeah, yeah. He used to be Dan Hardy's partner. Before. I can see why. And, um, but yeah, but that was the funniest shit I've ever. Good thing about having your hands out, you literally just put your head where you want those punches to go, <laughs> where you want a lot of punches to come. That's yeah, where you, like, your, that's where you uh, put your head. Uh, that sounds like a really stupid defense. So I, but you're right, uh, Greg. You know the fight that I thought was early was the Brad Tavares fight. Yeah. You know, when it comes to Hawaiians, you gotta let them fight. Because Hawaiians are a different breed. <laughs> they fight at weddings. They fight at funerals. They just, they fight. They go out and fight. And Hawaii is just a tougher person. So you can't, you have to give them the benefit of the doubt that they're always in a fight. 
Um, it's just they're just so Tavares, I think, had a good claim. He got he got knocked down, he got rocked, but you gotta give him a chance to recover. That that was well, a, it, it, yeah, especially since his eyes didn't exactly roll back in his head. He wasn't yeah. out, like he was stunned, he was definitely stunned, but he was not out. He went down. I, I absolutely agree. I, I don't think he was anywhere near being called out of that fight just yet. And then Giago, Christmas Giago knocked out Glenn. Uh, there was a fight, Brady Haystand, who I didn't believe was in the UFC when he came to my show. He came back and won. But since you guys didn't watch it, I don't want to bore you guys. Uh, except for the Usman's brother fought. And he fought this guy, Tafa. And it was one of those fights, Don, where the guy was kicking his ass on the feet. I mean, almost had him out numerous times in the first round. But the guy couldn't defend a takedown. And Usman was a college football player. Uh, so he just tackled the guy in round two and three and laid on him and won the fight because the guy had really no takedown defense. He was a glory fighter. The other guy, he was great on the feet, but it's just, you got to be well-rounded. Uh, um, so yeah. In Bellator, you guys watch the Bellator. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Can we just really quickly, uh, the, the, uh, the Ronnie Yaya versus Montel Jackson oh, yeah. fight. I, I, okay. The, the guy was plus 450. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, come on. I mean, he's in the UFC. How bad can he be? <laughs> mm. That looked like, I mean, like, I, I, it looked like he was in the wrong weight division. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he yeah, looked yeah. so much smaller than Mondell Jackson. Mondell just picked him apart and then just decided when he wanted the fight to end. It was almost a little embarrassing. I was like, if they make styles, makes fights. What the fuck was this? Like, yeah, but Yaya, Yaya has a win over Cody uh, Garbrandt. I mean, he's had some some big wins lately. Uh, That's like, it was very weird. Uh, maybe he didn't have a lot of prep time in it or something. But I mean, it was I I was rooting for him. But I mean, it, it was he got yeah. beat pretty bad. Now now, Sean Don, this has got to be the worst because so this was the Bellator Saturday night. It was the million dollar. The finale, right? Million dollar yeah. mystery fight. The win, no, no, the winner gets a million dollars, right? And it's two guys I know. Patchy. Wait, Bellator's doing that now? I thought that was PFL's business model. Bellator does it in like certain weight classes. Uh, they don't, not everybody, but, and they don't do it like they never tell you when the finals are. Isn't it crazy that the UFC probably paid a total of less than $1 million to its fighters the other night, all of them combined, and Bellator's doing it in one fight? Yeah. And, and the Bellator's probably got to get like one. 30th of the ratings because it was, right. up against, it was up against UFC. It was up against Lakers NBA finals and it was up against Garcia. Uh, <laughs> they probably picked that specifically. They're so good at picking, picking their schedule. Let's go against the finals and the, uh, and the, the Garcia. The NBA, NBA, the biggest boxing match in five years and the UFC is up against, right? And they yeah. had an event the night before in Hawaii. So you, people might have been Bellator out. But anyway, so they have this yeah. guy. Hufian Stotts versus Patchy Mix. I'm a, I'm a friend of both of them. Uh, Tatiana Suarez is dating Stotts for a long time. I mean, dating Patchy Mix for a long time. Hufian's a, a really good guy. He's been on the podcast before. Sean, Don, how do you prepare for this? Like, I'll just show you what happened. This is in the first 30, first two minutes of the fight. <laughs> so here you go. The front knee? Yeah, knee to the face. It was a back knee standing. The guy didn't even shoot. It was like, is there any way to know that this might come? I mean, hold on, one more time. Yeah, I didn't see it. Didn't. Wow. You see it, Don? If he was smart, he would have had his hands down and would have picked where he wanted the knee to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he should have done. That's I mean, what he's saying. Hey, he might have had a better chance of blocking it if his hands had been lower. Yeah. I mean, is there any way to like to defend that? A guy that's going to come out with a knee where he could hit you where you're standing. It wasn't even a jumping knee. It wasn't even like you could see him jumping. It was, I mean, Hoopion's a shorter guy, and the guy hit a knee without even going him going for a shot. The knee was able to knock him out. I, I was, is that just bad luck because you've never seen yeah. it before. I think it depends on which one of those guys you are, because for one of them, it was incredibly good luck. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what yeah. I think. It's, yeah, it depends on which side of the knee you're on, but one of them got really lucky and one of them got really unlucky. So, I wrong mean, Sean, place, I mean, wrong Sean, time. Sean and Don, it's, that's not luck. It's obviously skill, but was there, should should Stott's, uh training guys have seen that coming and say, watch out for that knee? 
Well, that's not something you expect, expect for sure. Like you don't yeah. train to block those, so that's a that's a rare strike for sure. So, oh man! I mean, a million dollars. Was it the first? Was the first time he threw that? Was the first, first time. time he threw that knee? Like yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Oh well, I mean, in the fight, well, the hell of I don't know if he I don't know if he's if it's through in other fights. You're right. I don't know, but uh, man, that was that was crazy. Uh, and then Aaron Pico won his fight. His last fight, his shoulder popped out like four. Here's times. the thing. Wait a second. Wait a second. Let's go back to this one second because it just seems like if that were an effective strike, that most guys would be susceptible. Then we would see it more often. It seems like that'd be very hard to land, and especially that cleanly with that much power to knock a guy out like that. From that range from a standing position i mean the whole thing there's something off about it there's something i don't like about it i don't know what it is i think but i, I think, find it I think, a little bit on it, it does definitely seems like a lucky lucky shot i think greg because he had a foot on him he was a foot taller so most guys don't have like a foot on their opponent was he That's literally true. a foot taller he was about a, he was he was he had a pretty big height advantage i don't know if it was a foot but mm -hmm. yeah he had definitely some inches um and then in Bellator, Pico won. Aaron Pico, last time he fought, remember they, they had to push his shoulder back in? His shoulder kept popping out. We watched it on the thing. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, Tim Johnson won. I was happy because he's the guy that was the uh, the bouncer at a strip club and an Uber driver. Um, and then Bellator does this weird thing, right? So it's all for the troops, right? So they're there in Hawaii, and they're like, oh, Hawaii, you know, we got to celebrate the troops, which is great. I obviously, you love the troops. But they, they introduce this girl who's a firefighter and she starts like dancing for no reason. Like they didn't. Of course. Once of course. again, <laughs> once again, no preparation for this. And I'm like, am I the only guy watching this? Hold on. I got I got to show you guys because I couldn't wait to go to get your uh, take on this. Uh, so here. OK, so Bellator does this thing where they go watch. As we honor our heroes who sacrifice themselves each and every day, we'd like to take this moment to acknowledge a woman who has selfishly dedicated her life and service to others while shattering all boundaries along the path of her 30-year career. Would you please stand up for one of the fire department's first female firefighter, first female captain, and first female battalion chief? Accompanying her, the first lady of fire, we welcome our former flyweight world champion and leading Waihele, Elimele McFarland. Would you please now put your hands together for the trailblazer, the Waihele of Waikiki, Debbie Elimeki. <laughs> Look, she's feeling it. Come on. I mean, the music's jamming, the lights are going. Why not? Like, ah, live in America. I mean, like, the they, they, they gotta start giving us the nation. I mean, don't you think they should prepare us for this though a little more? Like, I mean, it, hello. Well, I feel like what she didn't know she was there. Like, I think she just felt it, man. I think she was just feeling the vibe, you know. I'm not sure she was prepared. I think she got overtaken by the moment. Like, it just yeah, <laughs> caught the rhythm, man. Listen, I mean, the rhythm is going to get you. There's a right. reason. You know, <laughs> You've been worried I mean, about that for years. I mean, it was adorable, but and it was sweet. But I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? Well, what like, was she supposed to do? Just like wave and collect flowers? Like, she like you know no, what I mean? But like, I didn't know she was come out dancing. She was twerking. Like, she was uh, feeling uh, it, man. I, You know what? I'm into it. I like it. She was feeling it. Um, yeah, so that was that. And then Deanna Bennett lost against Liz Carmouche, which was, I, I love Deanna. She was the girl on the Ultimate Fighter. She kept getting head kicked and knocked out. But like, she, she was always winning the fight, and then she would get head kicked. Uh, this happened a couple times. Uh, so she was beating Liz Carmouche. So, she, so she's got a really steep learning angle. <laughs> That's great. She's really good. And she was beating Liz Carmouche. She was beating her, won the first three rounds, and then she Please got- Please tell me she got knocked with a head kick. No, arm triangle. But okay. her, but, she, but she did this, uh, uh, she's very awkward. And, and and I'll show you, like she she did, I know I'm going to a lot of clips today. Uh, More or less awkward than that dance we just watched. <laughs> she was awkward than that, because that was awkward. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. That's right. And there's no better place to get on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book and official partner of Major League Baseball. And guess what, people? 
new customers in Massachusetts getting in on the action with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash Boston. And finally, you can bet on all your favorite sports from the money line to point spreads to player props and more. I love it, okay? So I'm going to bet. I'm going to go on FanDuel. So now, bet on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss your chance to get $200 of bonus bets. Win or lose. How great is that? Okay? Visit FanDuel.com slash Boston and make every moment more. That's FanDuel, the official partner of Major League Baseball. You got to be 21 and older uh, and present in Massachusetts. Okay, your first online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable. And bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Help is here. So is hope. Hope and help. Gamblinghelplinema.org or call 1-800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. Play it smart from the start. GameSenseMA.com or call 1-800-GAM-1234. That's FanDuel. Check it out now. Right now. You want to bet? That's where you go. I got to talk to you about HelloFresh. First of all, what is HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get fresh farmed, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. You got to skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. Number one. All right. You can make mealtime easy with delicious recipes made with fresh, wholesome ingredients delivered to your door. No lines, no hassle, no gas, all the other stuff that you get to get there. No. Just great tasting meals you can whip up and enjoy in the comfort of home. Sounds good to me. HelloFresh has 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions, lifestyles, and preferences, okay? Take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon with rice or mushroom and chive risotto. That sounds delicious. I'm in. Now, me and my wife, we've been doing home-cooked HelloFresh, and it has been delicious, delicious, okay? It saves us time. It saves us money. We're in. So just go to HelloFresh.com slash Roasted60. Use the code Roasted60 for 60% off plus free shipping, okay? HelloFresh.com slash Roasted60, all right? HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Go check it out. So this was her, this was her, but right before the fight, this, I feel like this is one of like Don's kind of girl right here. Don Fry, what do you think, Don? Hold on, I'll show you. So they, they, they show, like, does she have any guns? Sit down, hold on. This up. I'll try not to be inappropriate with it. I'll just sit down nice. here, not put it close to the face. I'm great. <laughs> I'm just happy to see you guys. So, man, you're in a good mood. You're like cracking maybe inappropriate jokes. I don't know. This is a great, they great were way to start things off. I can't bring this down here. Uh, and then this one comes out and then it just starts going down my throat. And then it's like, oh, oh my God. For? I don't even, I'm not even yeah. sure. Not, we're not off to a good start. What the hell guys? just happened to you? I don't even think this is my fault. This stuff kind of usually is my fault. And I, I didn't do anything just for the record. I think it's my fault. I mean, my fight name is vitamin D for a reason. And it's not because of my cheery personality. As much as I like to tell people that's the case. It's really not. It's because I literally just two seconds up here and I'm like, so I deep throat the microphone now, right? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> now, who is she? <laughs> the fighter? <laughs> who is she and how can She's we support her fighter. GoFundMe? <laughs> yes. yeah. What's her OnlyFans handle? Do you have a fans only account? There you <laughs> go. <laughs> her name is Deanna Bennett. Uh, Vitamin D. Vitamin D. <laughs> Tell you what. I, I, I deep throat the microphone. By the way, we have uh, Jenny Savage. And then by the Bruce way. Buffer was like, she's still in my gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? I still, why? Oh, God. Anyways. All right. 
Um, so yeah, so that was uh she lost her fight. Unfortunately, she was winning. Vitamin D uh, was winning her fight. Uh that now I I mean whenever a girl starts talking about deep throating, they I'm, start choking. <laughs> they choke. <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Uh by the way, Tim Sylvia won his slap fighting contest. Um, did you guys see this? Unfortunately. Oh, good. <laughs> um tell, no, they're not. We're good. Yeah, good yeah. For Tim, Jim. Tim Sylvia uh won his uh his his slap fighting. He says he found his new favorite sport um and that he plans on taking it to the top. Uh he must be about 350. Uh but he's but he's he's good. He's good at he's good at slap fighting and um we will see how uh well, slap. you know, slap fighting is great cuz it doesn't require a lot of cardio. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. don't. Uh, you know the, <laughs> your target just stands there and takes it. Like uh, the, be the best thing is the guy that he was slap fighting seemed like he didn't want to make Tim mad, so he was kind of like <laughs> taking it easy. And I was like, I was sitting there thinking, I know Tim; he's going to hit you as hard as he can, whether whether you hit him hard or not. He's coming back a hundred percent. So uh, yeah. that was a good idea for that guy. Oh man! And then uh, so Tim Sylvia won, and then there's there was this fight with this guy who was like, did you see that fight with the guy with like four hundred pounds, and he fought three girls. <laughs> so saw a clip of it. Yeah, that was awesome. I, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I believe I've seen that a few times. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, which tube are we talking about? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Uh, oh, so uh, all right. There's a couple things we got to talk about uh, that that are very. So there was um. By the all right. So Darren, uh, yeah. So I wrote Darren Till. Basically, I made fun of Darren Till. I said Darren Till has a new favorite sport. Darren Till is a really good sport. He actually retweets all this shit and seems to like it. Uh, so that that's cool. Uh, Jenny Savage. I'm waiting for her to come on, and she's uh, having a tough time. So Greg, here. So uh, this is going to run things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you post this? Yeah. А другие должны атаковать, раз отлился не наш. How could they let this happen in Russia? What the fuck is this? <laughs> Where'd they get Job of the Hut? They found Job of the Hut uh, retirement. They they pulled out his pants halfway through, which is even like uh, crazier. Um, and then he gave up. I feel like he was taking it easy on those girls. Um, I feel like he could have like just sat on them or at least like. You know, anyway, we got Jenny Savage here. Jenny, how are you? I am good. Um, let me here. I'll mute that one. Um, I'll unmute you here. You're calling in from two different lines. Jenny Savage is a bare knuckle boxer. She's an MMA fighter. She's a kick ass girl. If you don't know her, she's the girl that jumped in the cage and poured water on the other girl there after a bare knuckle fight, and then uh, they. They threw her out of the whole ring, and then uh, it was a, a big fight that went through. Um, she's uh, she kicks ass. Uh, your last fight in bare knuckle boxing, it was a good fight. Um, I just uh, she fought. Uh, who'd you fight again? She can't hear me. Great. All right, Britain uh, Hart. Britain Hart. Britain Hart. She fought Britain Hart, who's actually um, married to uh, Joey the Executioner, by the way. Uh, you know Joey. Uh, Joe, you know what I'm talking about, right? Beltran. Joey Beltran. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you have to unmute her, though. Yes. Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Because uh, some reason you're you're like, you you call me in from two different places, but I can't hear you. But I can see you, and you look beautiful, uh, by the way. Um, so she fought Britton Hart. She Thank lost to Britton Hart. I think it was one of those things where she didn't throw enough punches um, because she it was a pretty good fight. It was just, it was one of those things where I think her output. Here we go. Uh, and, until she comes back, it. though, this week. There she is. Can you hear me? Okay, Jenny. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Jenny Perfect. Savage. There's some weird stuff that made me call. So okay. strange. How are you doing, Jenny? I am good. Um, I uh, am currently having difficulties uh, kind of showing my brains, huh? No, no, you're <laughs> fine. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> oh, hold on real quick. I'm going to try to get you on the. Yeah, show them. Show them to us. We want to see them. Show them to us. Him. No, you're, look, you're, you're doing great. I don't think you got to change anything. So Jenny, you're you're here with the legend, Jenny. By the way, you're here with uh, Don Fry. Oh, I can hear him very well. Yeah, yeah, Jenny. All right, my bad, my bad. I'm All good. To you're hear here you. with the legend. Here Don, now here I with... can hear you a little bit better, but I don't have headphones. With me. 
<laughs> okay. Technical difficulty should no, be over. In, uh, you fit in perfect in this podcast, by the way. Uh, this is this is exactly how this goes usually. Uh, exactly. Benny, you... All right. So you're here with Don Fry. You know who Don Fry is? Yes. Yes, I've I've heard of the legend. Yeah. Seen the legend. Uh, as well as Sean McCorkle, uh, another legend, uh, Greg Wolf. She's not heard of her scene. Uh, and then, and then we're here with Jenny Savage. Jenny, um, how did you think your last fight went in B- BKFC? I think that my opponent uh, is a cheater. Um, that's what got the fight to begin with. Is she was using some kind of? Um, excuse me. Let me get this Bluetooth in my ear. One moment. Okay. Oh, crap. This Zoom stuff. Yeah. Tell you what. It's rough. It's rough. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. Gosh. There we go. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So um, the fight. Um, first, first, I would like to to um, kind of correct you on the uh, water. She threw water on me. Okay. Uh, and it, they, everybody thought that um, um, even even Mr. Fellman, he thought that uh, that I had something to do with the water. But uh, I had actually initially got in there because um, a shrewd manager of mine um, told me that he wanted me there at that event to uh, commentate. And so I was waiting that whole time. I mean, I was in the middle of um, finals and uh, of course there was a pandemic. So the airports were like a mess. So by the time I got there, I was exhausted. I was hungry. Um, somebody had told me I wasn't going to get paid. So I was really pissed off. And uh, she was talking for like three minutes or more. And I hopped in there and I just told her to, to shut up and fight me later. And she uh, thought she was going to put water on me. And I, I like smacked the, the water bottle out of the way and I smacked her. And uh, but my last fight, I think that I did pretty good. I'm a little disappointed in uh, my coach. He decided to go with another fighter who uh, was no longer training with us. So uh, I guess you could say like my mind, it was 90% there. It wasn't hundred percent, unfortunately. Um, but I think I did. I think I did a pretty good job on my own with the confidence that I did have, to be honest. You had no coach. Yeah. I had only Adrian and, and I wasn't, I wasn't training with Adrian. So it's not like he knew how to tell me what to do, like what to look for other than like defensive kind of suggestions. That's and crazy. uh, yeah. Sean, you ever have a fight with no coach? Uh, I most of the fights, I felt like I didn't have a coach because they were uh, a lot of them the worst. But uh, no, I didn't listen to them anyway. All I ever asked in every fight, I always asked that they would tell me how much time was left in each round because I was notorious for bad cardio. Never once in my twenty-seven fights did anyone tell me even one time how much time was left in the round. In every fight, I'd go and listen. Just please tell me how much time's left. Once a minute, every you know, couple minutes. Never once did it happen. Don, you ever have no coach? Yeah, I did a couple of times. Oh, you know, and uh, I, a couple of times I had coaches that would have been better if I didn't have one at all. You know, <laughs> um, it, in the MMA world, you get you get people who just want to be in the fucking corner and in the entourage. You know, and they want to be seen, and they're not taking care. You're there for the fighter, not for yourself. And they don't. A lot of people don't understand that. Now, Jenny, why is Britton Hart a cheater? Um. Well, see, we were already aware that she was cheating due to her management. Um, her management's name even is the cheat code. I mean, it kind of gives itself away. Um, everybody on their management, um, is is uh, it's I guess it's alleged, but they had been um. You know, at some point in time, they've been uh, been accused of of taking uh, from steroids to uh, PEDs, EPOs, and um, you know, I was told that there's a lot of clinics in Miami that they like to go to, but I didn't really see that as anything that should stop me from getting the the uh, you know the world title shot. So I called her out. I said that we know that that she's been taking um, drugs that pretty much make her hyper. And uh, they help her make her lose a lot of weight. Now she's five, seven. And um, for this fight, she uh, just to just to snub me, she weighed in at 112 pounds, uh, thinking that I should at five foot go down to 105 pounds and uh, which I can't do. I'm a little wide, you know, in the belly. So um, I'm not I'm not really big like, you know, I'm not chunky or nothing, but I'm more wide. I'm not just because I'm short doesn't mean that, you know, I'm fit for 105 pounds. So. But when I'm get to like a 113 pounds, I feel a little sick, you know? So if I did what she did, 
I'd be just fine. But I don't know. I just, I knew that if I won, I'd get the belt. I get to announce it. If I lose, I still get to, you know, announce it and, and expose her because uh, clearly she was hyper. Um, you know, they, they had us way in. So hopefully they actually notice it and want to clean up because, um, you know, they're trying to get respect in the BKFC like the UFC. Well, I thought you did great. I just thought you just should have been a little more active. Like, like when you threw punches, well, you did great. Yeah. Yeah. Did you notice like the first two rounds, me and her were kind of just doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we didn't get time to uh, warm up. Somebody had gotten injured. And so they kept having these intermissions. They had like two intermissions. And then, uh, of course, it's broadcasted. So it's a, it's it was done a little different. That was the first time that they had broadcasted the BKFC uh, on a cable network television so or channel. So um, when the uh, guy before us got injured, because we were, you know, we were in a, like a hockey uh, arena. It was a lot of sweat on the ground. I guess he like slipped and he twisted his knee. So they had to rush us out. And the unfortunate part that a lot of people don't get to see is that, um, you know, I'm in Virginia, I'm in her uh, area, so to speak. And there was a lot of um, officials who were in my room, more than one, unfortunately for me. And they were all friends with her, like family friends uh, with Britain Hart. So um, they were pretty much like telling me things that I guess they were trying to get in my head and kind of stop me in a way, which I shouldn't have let bothered me, which is why I wish I had more than one corner. Um, you know, cause the one I had was my boyfriend, so no excuses, but I'm definitely going to get back the next time, uh, I get any kind of shot title shot. Uh, it's going to be mine regardless. Well, you're, you're a little spark plug. I love watching you fight. You always have heart. You always, you're, you're getting better and better. Um, now this week, Don, Sean, Greg, it is BKFC yeah. this yeah. week sponsored by only fans and lions, not sheep and bucked up. Um, this week it is Mike Perry versus Luke Rockhold. Finally, finally. <laughs> um, man, Jenny, you're the BKFC fighter here. Who's going to win this fight? Ah, uh, I want to, I, this particular matchup is very hard for me though. I think that Perry will be successful. Um, for me, I don't care who wins, honestly. So, uh, Sean I'll be in attendance. Uh, I think uh, Rockhold's going to be just too big for him, man. Luke walks around, I think, about 225 pounds, 230. So it's, uh, you know, Perry probably walks at 185. So that'd be a – it's got a big size difference. I don't know. But Perry, you never – you can't count that dude out, man. He's got he's got balls for sure, man. That dude, uh, that dude's dude got a lot of heart, man, and he's, he's there to fight when he comes in. Don? Uh, shit. I'll tell you what. I'm going for Rockhold. I go for Luke. I think Luke's, uh, you know, he's a hell of a fighter. He had a bad run there at the end, but now he's going to pick it back up, you know, and he'll, he'll be doing good for a while. Does it say they're fighting at 175? That's what it says. Yeah. There's no way Rockwell's making 175. Greg, who is it? Listen, I think this is the perfect place for Mike Perry. You know, if, if if he has any one advantage, it's that thick skull of his. So <laughs> I, I, don't know, I swear to God, I think this is that's the advantage he has in this. I think Rockhold in any other arena would have the far greater advantage, but I think in in bare knuckle, I, I like Mike Perry. I think this is his, I think he definitely has a shot to win this. I think he will. I mean, he beat MVP in bare knuckle boxing. I mean, I didn't think he actually won that fight, but they gave it to him. Uh, and Rockhold's chin hasn't been the best, uh, but at the same time, I'm with you, Sean. I think he's too big. Also, Chad Mendez versus Eddie Alvarez is on this card. Interesting. Chad Mendez says this is his last, this might be his last fight ever. Uh, now do they, Jenny, do they test for steroids in bare knuckle boxing? Um, I think it's, it's based off of the state, um, commission that they're in. So, you know. It just varies based off of that. Sometimes they'll even test you for weed. They'll test you for have you whatever. Ever every... Have you been tested? No, no, but I volunteered it for the next fights that I'll be on. I'll, they could test me for anything. Yeah, but no one's going to volunteer except for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> so the, the answer is no. Uh, no I'm, I'm not, vol I'm not volunteering. One fighter. Yeah, I'm not volunteering and I'm not even fighting. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jenny. And Eddie yeah. Alvarez, Chad Mendez, who wins this fight? Uh, I think Chad only only for the um, he's he's been trying to train for this for for some time now. I want to say for like two years at least. So um, my money's more on him. Um, 
I love both guys. Uh, but Eddie, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's kind of, isn't he on a streak, like a, a losing streak? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think he won his last one and won championship. But uh, Oh, okay, okay. But uh, Sean, who are you liking this one? Yeah, probably Chad Mendez, man. I think he hits harder, and that matters a lot in a bare knuckle, man. I think he hits a lot, swings a lot harder, and uh, has bigger punching power than Eddie. So I'd go Mendez probably. Don Fry? I'm going for Mendez. Greg, I'd like to see Alvarez win it. I really would. I'd like to see him start. Uh, so, I mean, if this is Mendez on his way out, then I'd like to see Alvarez on his comeback. So, I mean, for me, it's a coin toss. I think it yeah. can go either way. Yeah. But I, I think Eddie Alvarez, I mean, if he's focused and it sees this as an opportunity to kind of climb back into the fighting arena and start getting his career back on track, I, I like Alvarez. Now, also, on the, I'm with you, uh, Sean, as far as, I mean, Greg, as far as coin flip. Also, Rowdy Beck, who we've had on the podcast. Yeah, yeah Randy Beck. You used two-headed coin, though, you cheater. <laughs> <laughs> Rowdy Beck, who's a little haughty. She's awesome. I've hung out with her. She's fighting this girl, Christine Fajaya, who is a Faria. Faria. She's a monster. Yeah. She's a straight savage. And this is her sport. She just... Um, man, Rowdy Beck hasn't fought in a while, but she has been boxing. But this is going to be a tough one. Um, who wins this one? Jenny Sam. Uh, my my girl Christine got this in the bag, man. I mean, I've never been hit so hard in my life. Uh, I've never been pushed. She's a. Uh, I've trained with her twice, and um, she sets the bar high for even the men. I mean, she's very humble. Uh, she's very focused, and and you know, one thing I love about her is that she um. She'll say, you know what? I treat everybody the same. Um, I, I treat them like they're the greatest fighter in the world. And that mentality alone, uh, she can't be beat. She just can't. Sean? I'm going to go with her, man. I think uh, I like uh, Rowdy Beck, but I don't uh, – yeah, I don't see her beating uh, Faria. I don't uh, – they probably will drug test them. A lot of those, if it's up to the state, they just test uh, championship bouts. So they probably – actually, the girls probably will get tested if this is uh, an actual title uh, – Match, which it looks yeah, but like there hasn't been one time. person to fail a bare knuckle boxing test so far. Not one. <laughs> yeah, it's not hard to beat the state test. So I've heard. Uh, my fight though uh, was not. It was it was for a championship, and like and I said, you know, uh, yeah, no, no. I I wish, I wish. <laughs> yeah, I, I never had a. I never had a steroid test the entire time I fought. Thank God. Don, but. who is this one? <laughs> uh, all right, Greg. <laughs> I'm going for Aya too, only because, you know, Rowdy, she's been really inconsistent, not just in terms of her win-loss record, but in terms of her activity. Yeah. You know, it sounds like Ferreira is in, in stride. She's in motion. She, you know, she's six and one. She's coming in there hot. I, 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 I got to give it to her. I th think she's going to take that. Now, also, Ben Rothwell is fighting Josh Huggy Bear Copeland, who was a football star back in the day. He was in the PFL. He got kicked out for something. I think it was a domestic thing, but I guess it was dropped. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, so I can't comment on it. But Ben Rothwell has been looking like a monster uh, in this. I think he also found his sport. I think he knocks. Yeah. Out, I think he knocks out a Huggy Bear. Sean, you know Huggy Bear? Um, you're talking about um, Copeland. What is it? Josh Copeland. Copeland? He used to be in the uh -huh. UFC and PFL. No. I thought you were talking about. Uh, you talking about the uh, guy who. Uh, Break dances after his win. Oh, that's Chris Barnett. He's also yeah. I think about Barnett. Yeah. Uh, Jenny, have you trained with Rothwell or do you know anything about Rothwell or Cole? I'll tell you now. Uh, both are great fighters, but one is just way bigger, and uh, that's that's Rothwell. It's Rothwell. Yeah, he, yep. he is gigantic. He is um a Megatron. I don't. I. Uh, it's hard <laughs> for me to see anybody beating him right now, honestly. Uh, Don Fry. And uh, I. I don't know. I haven't seen either one of them fighting so long. You know, shit. You don't. You don't know what's. You know if they've improved or if they've gone the other way. Greg, I like what you said about Rothwell. I mean, the guy is. This could be his perfect sport. I mean, if it's one thing he's got, it's size and power. You know, I mean, yeah. it doesn't sound like he's going to need a lot of technique. Doesn't get going to need no ground game, no wrestling defense. This could be the perfect place for Rothwell. I like him a lot in this. And if that's not, the slap fight. fighting championship is just around the corner. So. You're <laughs> damn right. That's, 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 if this doesn't work out, there's slap fighting. So. Also, Chris Camozzi, who may have one of the hottest girlfriends I've ever seen in my life. Her name is Whitney Johns. She's an influencer. She just had a boxing match. She lost, but... uh. 
she, uh, <laughs> she can you be an influencer without boxing nowadays is that like a, is that a requirement <laughs> like i'd like to be an influencer i just don't know if i have the time to put in training uh chris camozzi um he he's a good dude also uh at least if i hold on chris he um there's a there's a video i, I posted of him punching his his girlfriend's butt um uh, <laughs> so, so anyway uh he's fighting in this he he won his first fight in like nine seconds against uh against what's his name the guy that you like uh baba mcdaniel oh did he yeah, 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 yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I like Chris a lot. Um, but yeah, you got to see his girlfriend, Whitney Johns. Jesus Christ. Uh, I but- got to admit, a lot of these fighters in, in Bare Knuckle have a record of either 1-0 and or just 0-0. Oh and oh. uh, <laughs> Those oh, yeah. seem to be a lot of longevity so here. Here's the, the video. Here's the oh, video. Hello. Here's the video of him practicing with his girlfriend. <laughs> So, um, Je- Je- Jenny, uh, your uh, your husband or boyfriend's a fighter. Do you guys ever practice like this or no? Uh, no, I, I can't say we do. I, I think we we do more punching of the faces. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, how much? How much is it for a gym membership? How much is it for a gym membership at that? Uh... <laughs> We're just punching. The girl. Uh, yeah, where do you sign up for the ass class? Ah, shit. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So that's uh, that's BKFC this week. Uh, oh, and then Laura Sanko posted a picture of her boobs. Did you guys see this one? Um, we my- cover all the important no. news here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, can you guys see this? Not yet. Hold on. I, I- uh, just see you. Oh no! So hold on. Uh, One boob. Here we go. I see a big boob. Just you. Yeah. Big boob. All right. So here's Laura Sanko. She wrote uh, her 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 thirst trap. Can you you, you guys see this? Mm-hmm. So she she goes. This is my quarterly thirst trap. So the Instagram algorithm will pick me up again. Uh, and then I wrote um, breaking news: the only UFC commentator who has nicer tits than Sanko is Daniel Cormier. Oh. And then she wrote, that's debatable. She wrote, that's debatable. So, nice. uh, yeah, yeah. So she's obviously a good sport. Um, and then well, uh, this, let's see some photos. <laughs> so this week in the UFC, oh, by the way, uh, Kelvin Gastelum announced he's moving back down to 170. So thank God, because I think he's got a legitimate shot of winning at 170. I don't know. I don't like the combination of Kelvin Gaslam is going back down. That never works out for him. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not, that's not a combo I'm looking to hear. I have a feeling that Kelvin, Kelvin Gaslam is going back down to a catch weight when he doesn't make the weight. That's what he's going down. Yeah, exactly. He's going back down exactly. to 177. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. There's no fucking way he makes 170. Jesus. Um, by the way, Jenny, you said you had something to announce. Any any big announcements you wanted to say? You said you had a big announcement. Oh, oh, that's what it was. It was just pretty much I had a lot to talk about of uh what happened. I mean, um cheaters gonna cheat, but it'll it'll come out in the wash at the end of the day. Like I said, I don't I'm not against any like recreational uh drugs like marijuana. I I just the only reason why I don't smoke anymore is because it's it's a game of millimeters, you know, instead of centimeters in our game. So it's sort of like if the champions are kind of cutting it out, I guess, like, you know, Christine Faria, she doesn't smoke. Um, You know, I'm going to stop. But when it comes to these uh, girls that are like freaking Loch Ness monster size and then they're coming down like crackheads, it's just really annoying (laughs) because then it's like I'm expected to be a crackhead. And if I get any smaller, I'm going to freaking have no ass boobs and I'm look like a freaking sunken cheek. So, mm. um, you know, that's yeah, all. <laughs> no, nobody wants that. By the way, Nate Diaz is claiming self-defense against that guy. Uh, he oh, said he's, yeah. he's claiming self-defense against the guy <laughs> that he put into a guillotine. Oh, snap. What happened? <laughs> you didn't see the fight you got into over the weekend? Uh, no, no. He, he beat up a guy that looked like Logan Paul who goes around as not <laughs> Logan Paul. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he thought it was Logan Paul and he put him in a standing guillotine, knocked him out and then just left. Um, and now there's a oh, warrant out for his al- arrest in New Orleans, but he's cooperating with the police. So UFC this week, it's Ricky Simone against Song Yadong. Um, should be a good fight. Uh, both those guys 
are... Say that again. Say that again. Song ah. Yudong. Yep. Song Yudong. Ricky Simone is taking on Song Yudong in the main event. Uh, Song Yudong <laughs> is uh, a good fighter. He's coming off a really good fighter. He's coming off a loss to Corey Sanhagen, but he beat Marlon Morass. He beat Arce. He beat Casey Kenny. Ricky Simone has won like five or six in a row. Uh, I like Ricky Simone in this. Uh, Greg? Same. I like him a lot. I think he's hot, man. That guy's, he's a savage. I like him. Sean? Uh, I don't know who I'm going with, but I heard that Bruce Buffer likes Young Dong. Oh, there we go. So, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's probably going with him. So. Okay. Uh, also on the card, Natan Levy, who's from Israel. Uh, who, 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 who he fights for the Jews? A hot, a hot man of <laughs> fighting potential. There you go. <laughs> He's fighting Pete Rodriguez, who's the guy who beat up Mike, Mike Jackson, uh, the one that's always fighting with uh, Jake Shields. You know the guy, the guy that. I, mean, I sure hope I'm never known as the guy that beat up Mike Jackson. <laughs> like that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing to have on your resume. Like you beat up the worst fighter yeah. ever in the UFC. <laughs> So uh Nate oh, Levy, uh I hope I hope he wins uh for my people. Um and then Journey Newsom is fighting. He's a guy that went to like 19 different uh uh adoption agencies, youth hostels, uh group homes as a kid. Uh, so it's not just a clever name. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Journey. Journey, oh. Journey Newsome. Uh, his dad was a boxer. Uh, he, he kept his, his, his uh, mom smoked crack, but she was pregnant with him. Um, and he's went to like seven or eight different youth homes. He's, he, you know, but now he's in the UFC. He's fighting Brian Kelleher, who's a pretty good rapper. Uh, he's a good fighter, but he's also a rapper. <laughs> um, so also on this card, Cody Durden, who's the guy that beat the guy who was from China and said he's going to send him back to China. Remember that? Yeah. Um, and then. <laughs> yeah. What? Everyone got mad at him uh, <laughs> because um, he's fighting Charles Johnson. He's the guy that he's bald, but he has like a, a loofah in his back. Uh, look at his hair. His hair looks like it looks like. Oh like, yeah, yeah, that little ball tuft of hair. Yeah, yeah. I think Jenny just left. And then, uh, and then uh, Jake Collier. He's the guy who um he went to a wedding and someone said you're really fat. Uh, I can teach you jujitsu. And next, you know, he was training under the guy in like a treehouse, a mat under a treehouse. Uh, and then he made the UFC like five years later. Um, he's back up in heavyweight. He was at 185, but now he he like basically <laughs> he, he's the guy that lost to Huggy Bear. He, he's eating his way to the top. <laughs> <laughs> so much for his revenge body. <laughs> it's what I wonder if that's how a lot of fighters get started. Hey, you're fat. You should fight. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible. Hold on. I, I want to show you him before. You're taking this real personal. Hold on. <laughs> um, hold on. I got to show you him before and after. Hold on. Let's see. Um, yeah, this is him. All right. This is before or after training under the treehouse. I was going to say, I feel we need before, after, and then back to, and then at, and then ever after. <laughs> so this is not hold on. So this is how he looks. This is crazy. I'll show you. So this is how he look. This is this is how he looks now. You guys see? Yeah. And this is how he looked before in the UFC. So a guy saw him when he looked on the right and like you're fat. You need to find the UFC. And he's like, I'll show you fat. And he got fatter. <laughs> yeah. He got fatter. Who made that uh, meme? What kind of moron did that in the wrong order? That should have been before and after crack. <laughs> and after and before. <laughs> oh, um, and then did you see George Foreman hitting hitting the bag? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you got Adam Adderall is a hell of a drug, man. <laughs> Where do you find the time? To find this, all the this is George Foreman now, right? Uh, Don, this has got to be inspiring to you. Hold on. So, uh, all right, let's see what we got. Well, because you have that movie coming out, so he figured the attention is going to be back on him, I guess. Can you guys hear me? Not yet. So this is George Foreman. Man, my dad still got it. This is George Foreman now. You still got that power, Dad? Power doesn't age. Are you ready? 
Let me see what you got, Chad. His feet look like they're nailed to the floor. Oh, he was never known for movement. I can't see this. I'm so under me. You know, he's got like five sons and all of them named George. Yep. <laughs> That's what you get out of this? The guy's like 85 years old, moving the fucking bags around. And you talk about his son's name, George? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> all right. Um, Jenny Savage is back, by the way. Uh, Jenny is married. Jenny, to- Jenny, you missed some big stories. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny is married. To- Jenny's boyfriend is a, a great fighter as well. He's also a professional wrestler. He's this like ripped black dude. Um, <laughs> and you guys are, and you guys have kids together, right? No, I just have my son. Um, he, he's my boyfriend. Um, at, he was like my high school crush, but I got with my son's father and had my son. And then my son's dad, like, you know, went off the deep end in the party world. So I, you know, focused in athletics and uh, my boyfriend was the one that originally brought me back to the athletic world. Uh, he, we met in wrestling, so. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Now, how old? How old is your son now? He's about to be fourteen, actually. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Holy cow! Yeah. Definitely the hottest mom, uh, badass yeah. mom, bare knuckle boxer <laughs> mom. Uh, the kids ever like uh, come out? They, they have crushes on you yet or no? The fourteen year old? Yes, and that's honestly. Uh, he asked me. It was funny because his father, um, he passed away during the pandemic, and so I really was really conscious of my son's uh, confidence. And he he was like, "Mom, could you?" Um, could you not be like the other girls? And it's kind of cringe. I don't want my friends uh, looking into you. <laughs> I was like, yes, sir. You know, I guess there's nothing worse <laughs> than getting into your, um, you know, high school and your mom's, you know, got your stuff all over the place. No, yeah. no shade to no one else, but you know, it was just a preference of my son. You know, I was like, gotcha. <laughs> got it. Nice. Yeah, um, and, then, and then I saw you training in the, uh, the gi. You said that's your favorite thing to do. Jitsu. Yes, that that is my that's my stuff right there because it's humbling. Um, win, lose, draw, whatever. Um, you always come out feeling like you know another person. So I think I love the process of um, the the gi jujitsu specifically. So are you gonna get back into MMA? Oh yeah, I'm. Well, probably not anytime soon because my my eyes are still on the gold. I, I believe that I'm gonna achieve the world championship at BKFC. Don, you're and I, I want. By the way, Don. <laughs> what nothing <Bye>. okay so, <laughs> the, the camera went to your belt and you're flying down my fly is, <laughs> my fly is down yes uh no. thank you don <laughs> can we get back to jenny please please you were saying something about winning a championship you're in the middle of a great run there and then it all became about <clears throat> don fries as it always does. <laughs> well, I feel like yeah, I, I feel like Don's taking a piss when you call me. Oh. I feel like Don. As soon as a girl Are says, like, as, as as soon as a girl says she's uh, a hot girl comes on, his fly automatically goes down. I feel like he doesn't even <laughs> take it down. That, that's how much of a man he is. It goes down <laughs> on its own. That's, oh, that's the Don Price. No attention. <laughs> uh, you interrupted me. I was taking I was, when you called me. I was taking a leak, you know, so I had to you know, close up. And let, I forgot to close the barn door after I got the horse back in. You know? First of all, you signed on, so that's complete bullshit. I didn't call you. Okay, <laughs> you, you had to sign on to the podcast. Oh, you don't. You oh, you're that's right. You're too good to call people. You don't call people. <laughs> <laughs> He's the most manipulative guy. All right. So your boyfriend, by the way, uh, who is, is he fighting anytime soon? Oh, yes, actually. He should be fighting. Um, hey, babe, when are you fighting? Come say hi. Third week in July, he says. Nice. Uh, no, what's up, man? How are you? Who are you, who are you fighting against? What's up, homie? How are you doing, man? So who are you fighting against in, in July? I don't know yet. My coach just told me he got an opening. Uh, he said he found a guy. He didn't tell me who he was. So he said, third week of July. I said, book it up. I don't really care who it is. They get beat up. There you <laughs> go. That's right. Nice. Now, are you still doing the uh, pro wrestling? 
Yeah, yeah. I actually got a show on uh, May 6th in uh, Portland, Tennessee, the big shop. One of the bigger shows for this uh, pro wrestling entertainment that I wrestle for. So, yeah, it's going to be a good show, man. <laughs> You're here with the legend Don Fry, who is an amazing pro wrestler, one of the best, uh, the best I'm in the right business. Uh, you ever watch any What's of Don? That was a horrible. Oh, that's the OG. That was a horrible pro wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> you were a great pro wrestler. What are you talking about? Oh, that was horrible. Jeez. <laughs> How are you doing, nice sir? <laughs> no, what are hey, you talking the, about? I'm good. That's the go, OG bro. right there. I'm good, man, man. It's an honor to meet you, brother. Oh, yeah. You're the OG right there. Yeah, real fighter. Thank real you. fighter right there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you. And look what yeah, it's done tell, for him. Tell that dumb, <laughs> tell that dumb white boy uh, you're talking to. Uh, you better be careful, or I'll come through the, I'll, I'll drive over there to California or El Vegas, wherever he lives, and stomp his guts out. Hey, you don't want to mess with Don Fryer, bro. He's you're that Adam. That's not you do not. No, no, hell no. Don, Don, Don is one of the, the greatest ever. He's my, he's my favorite fighter to watch. Now, Don, there's a video of you calling everyone sissies going around the internet. Uh, do you, do you yeah. stand by that? Yeah. I, you know, hell, they, they took that. That was like five or seven to ten years ago. You know, I don't even know when that was. That was a long time ago, shit. But it felt like things have just gotten worse. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Jenny, how can people follow you? They can follow me at the Tennessee Gangster on Instagram. Uh, I think it's the same on, on um, Twitter. And, yo, I'm just going to shout out everybody who be dodging me but running their mouth like Andy Wynn. Fight me. You know what I mean? Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> nice. Wait, wait, the Crasian? Yeah, she told Misfit uh, when she came on the scene, she was like, I want Jenny Savage. And then, you know, I keep getting these contracts and then she bails out and then fights people I fought. And then, you know, they think that it's an easy thing and uh, they – go the distance and it's like i just think that's an easy payday to be honest with you uh, I like so I'm, I like, I'm trying to get back in there you and the crazy be a great fight i'd love to see that fight you, yeah, you know her, get knocked uh, out. Her, her name is her <laughs> name is the crazian she's uh from vietnam she's a badass fighter she's also she's like 40 she's hot as hell also yeah. has daughter. she's uh she sent me free beef jerky uh, which was yeah. nice. So. Oh, some beef jerky. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, <laughs> you better watch out. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, what's crazy is I, I seen her as a legend. I looked up to her. I thought she was amazing. Uh, her, Felice Herrig, uh, even thought Rowdy Beck was legends. But I just realized that, well, aside from Felice, you know, she didn't do anything to me. But, um, yeah, they just like to, to run their mouth and then go behind a wall to, of protection uh, behind their name. You know what I mean? And um, it just sucks because, you know, the fans want it and she keeps running her mouth behind the scenes and then going to go train with everybody that hates me. So, uh, if she's so confident to say these things, why don't she back it up? You know, there it All is. Right. Shots fired. Andy, Wynn. we got to get her, we have to get her response on the pot. Maybe we'll do a, another MA roasted, uh, press conference between Jenny. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> Jenny Savage and the crazy. I think that's the only way we could do this right now. Uh, Absolutely. Well, well, thank you again, and uh, take care. See you. Be good. See you later. Bye. Don, sorry to call you about the zipper. Want me to take, take that out? <laughs> That's the yeah. best part. No, I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah, you don't <laughs> care. Hey, Don hey, fucking fried. Most interesting, most, most, most interesting thing that was said tonight. Uh, okay, I won't take it out. Look, every belt he wears is a championship belt. <laughs> <laughs> That shit stays in. We're trying to wiggle for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, May 11th to the 15th, I will be at the House of Comedy in Phoenix. Hopefully, I'll, in Scottsdale. Hopefully, I'll see you, Don. Um, I'll see you there. Yeah, Greg, sure. Greg, what do you got coming up? Uh, this weekend, I'm doing a place up in outside of Portland in Washougal, Washington, called uh, Los Dos Cantina. They do a big comedy night there once a month, so I'll be headlining that. And then next, and then the week after that, I'll be back in Vegas at the Oyo Casino. Uh, there, uh, May like you know, I think it's May first through sixth or something like that. So that first week of May, I'll be up there. And, uh, and then I think I actually finally get to be home for a week. By the way, I never do this much road. I don't know how you do this, Adam. I, it fucking sucks. I, I hate leaving all. It's like I barely get my batteries recharged. It's time to pack and leave again. Like, it's crazy town, man. 
This isn't the way, but listen, that's the way it goes right now. A lot of road work, and I'm happy to have it. And I love performing for everybody. Just had an amazing weekend out in Portland. Uh, so this is going to be in Portland. I'm also doing a show at Al's Den on Friday night up there in Portland. Uh, that's going to be my little warm up show on Friday. So come out to that one. But then the headlining show will be over in uh, Washougal. So that's that's what's going on, guys. Don, what do you got coming up? Uh, let's see. May 5th, 6th, and 7th, I'll be up in New Jersey doing an autograph signing. Um, so I don't, don't know where, but you can look it up. It's on the internet, so <laughs> <laughs> but some somewhere in the big somewhere in the big city. Yeah. Awesome. Sean, I, would, I would verify you know who's paying you, Don, before you before you go. He's like, I don't know who this is for. I don't know what it, don't know what it pays. I don't know. I'm just doing autograph signing. But you're with uh, Ken Shamrock, right? And H- Hoist Gra- and Henzo Gracie for that. No, Frank Frank and Henzo. Frank Shamrock and Henzo Gracie. So that's pretty damn awesome. Uh, and Sean, what do you got coming up? I've got no autograph signings, no comedy clubs, pretty much nothing. So, uh, uh, are you done with the dog? Are the dogs any any new breed of dogs coming? Uh, no, no. I actually sold uh, yesterday my last uh, one from that litter. I sold. The guy finally picked her up. It had been about three weeks. I've been holding her for him. I thought for a while he wasn't coming to get her, but uh, he got her. And then he texted me last night and said he thinks he might have made a mistake. So I was like, "Yeah, that's." I don't know what to tell you, man. What I'm happened to the old. What happened to the gay dog? Uh, yeah, that he's uh technically no longer with us. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he had to go to dog heaven. So, um, that's a whole yeah, other thing. Oh, so glad we kept that in the pot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he uh, just just because he, he has a, transvestite, he has transvestite tendencies. You shot him. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, before I had the chance to shoot Bring him, he started much, having seizures. Taking too much so. Bud Light. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> what? He too was much drinking, Bud Light. He was drinking too much Bud Light. <laughs> he got fancy. But uh, yeah, okay. no, he's, he's not technically with us. And he's in, he went to that big, uh, that big uh, dog bone in the sky, as they call it. Bud Light know. Bowl in the, Bud Light Bowl. Bud Light Bowl in the sky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, do you guys think we should have the um, Andy versus Jenny press conference? Do we need that? Sure. If you can put it together, why not? And Andy's a good friend of mine. So um, she, she's super cool. So What does her name stand for? Andy Wynn? No, her, her fight name. What is it? What's it stand for? Crazian? The crazy Asian? Yeah, the crazy crazy Asian. The crazy. I just wanted you to say that. I knew what it stood for. But <laughs> I just wanted you guys to. I don't know, that's why I said it that way. Because I'm like, how did you not put this together? Yeah, what? I just want you guys to say something racist on camera. <laughs> oh, don't worry. This whole last three minutes is cut. There's no <laughs> way. No, I'm not. I'm not cutting it. From the dog part. From nope. the dog part on out. I'm not cutting any of this. Uh, anyway, you guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much. Love you guys. Take care. All right.